Today, the title of our message is The Necessity of Christ, Why He Had to Come. Why did God have to send Jesus Christ as a man on the earth and to bear the sins of humanity on the cross and die for our sins so that we might be forgiven? Why did He have to do that? Why couldn't He just save us all anyway? I mean, He's God. He's all-powerful. He can do whatever He wants, right? Well, that's not true because God is answerable to one person, and that person is him, His own self. He cannot violate his nature, and it would be wrong for him to forgive one sin of any man without Jesus Christ. It would be wrong for him to do that according to his own nature, not according to me or according to you or any angel, according to his own intrinsic nature. <clears throat> if an honest man tells a lie, then he is no longer an honest man, and he negates that quality of honesty uh, by telling that lie. And God uh, has 12 attributes, and he will always be faithful to those attributes which make him God, who he is, which qualify him to be God. Uh, and we're going to be discussing why God had to send Christ. And this is very important and very uh, crucial to your understanding uh, about salvation for your own soul and mankind. Um, I'm going to be referring to a lot of scriptures. I'm not going to give you the address of those scriptures, but if you'd like them, just send me a YouTube message and I will, will help you with that. Uh, but the first thing we must understand is one of, God, one of God's attributes is holy. God is holy. And that simply means that God is without sin. If we go back to the Garden of Eden in Genesis, <clears throat> and we have Adam, the first man, and God created him, and I'm going to use these glasses again. I'll use these a lot. Adam had his outer body, his physical body, and he also had inside that uh, dwelling his, his physical body, his human spirit. And in, in, in dwelling as human spirit, he had God's Holy Spirit, and he was complete that way. And after Adam had sinned and called what we call the fall in the garden, the fall of mankind, God had to separate his spirit from Adam's spirit because he is holy. and He could not remain in an indwelling relationship with Adam uh, after he had sinned. Now, of course, God still loved Adam, and he still uh, strived with mankind, but he could not indwell uh, like he had done done first before Adam's initial sin. <clears throat> Another example are the sinning angels. Uh, if you took you know, the spirit of an, an angel when God first created the angels, and they were, of course, created before man, God indwelled their angelic spirits. And uh, if you didn't know this, a third, one-third of the angels have sinned against God, and God had to disconnect himself from them, and he exited their angelic spirit, and they, are, they no longer have an indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit because God is holy. Remember I said he, he will not deny himself. He's not going to deny his holiness and uh, just love him so much that he won't leave because that would deny himself, and that would violate his attribute of holiness. And, of course, he is love, and he still loves the angels that fell and sinned, but there's no salvation for them. The third example I'm going to give you, the first was Adam, uh, the second was sinning angels, and the third example of God's holiness, where he had to exit uh, the indwelling, uh, indwelling a, a spirit because of sin, is Jesus Christ on the cross. Now, of course, Christ was born with body, human spirit, and Holy Spirit indwelling. Lived his whole life, 33 years, without sinning one time. Uh, and God, he qualified to be the Savior for mankind. And on the cross, he, God poured out the sins of humanity, the whole wagon load of all mankind, all the sins upon this one sinless man, this one innocent man, upon his, his spirit, <clears throat> and he bore the sins of the world. And after he did that, you know, we know what Christ said. He says, Father, why hast, why hast thou forsaken me? And we know that God exited his spirit and, and disconnected himself from the spirit, human spirit of Jesus Christ because of the sin, because God is holy. Okay? So I want you to get that. That's the first thing we must understand is God's holiness. He cannot uh, continue to indwell uh, a spirit uh, that has that has sinned. Now, of course, we have a provision of Jesus Christ, and that allows for grace and for, for God to continue working and pleading with us to uh, turn back from sin if that's what we choose to do. And He still indwells us, waiting for us to uh, turn back to Him. <clears throat> and that certainly does not guarantee our eternity in heaven with Him. We must follow Him in faithful relationship for that to happen on this earth. But uh, the second point I want to make is God is just. He is justice, if you've ever heard that. Uh, and simply what that means is that uh, full penalty must be paid for each and every sin. Okay, full penalty. Uh, and you're not going to like this, but the full penalty for one sin is, is first spiritual death, 
God exiting that, that spirit. Uh, if, you know, if, if he indwelled, if you were, you know, we're all born in this state with just uh, the human body and our, our human, human spirit, but uh, the, the full penalty for each and every sin committed is eternal death, which is hell, which is uh, being in an eternity outside the presence of God and everything that he ever made. And that is the full penalty for sin. Now, I have three examples here. Again, the angels who had sinned, the, the Bible says, if, you know, if God spared not the angels, uh, and it says the angels are also reserved in chains, uh, I'm paraphrasing, uh, an everlasting darkness or something like that, but they are, there is no hope for them. The, the angels that sinned just one time, they must pay the full penalty for their sin, which is, uh, eternal damnation, which is outside of God's house and His presence forever and ever in the blackness of darkness forever. And I don't like to talk about this, but it's not, not fun. It's not uh, uplifting, but it is the Word, and we must preach it. <clears throat> the second thing, uh, Christ. As we know, Christ never sinned, although the sins of humanity were, were placed upon His Spirit on the cross. Uh, he paid the penalty for that. You know, the penalty for sin, and, and God, God uh, placed all the sins of humanity on him, and he tasted first spiritual death when uh, God exited his human spirit, and then he also tasted eternal death. Did you know that? He went to hell uh, for three days, and uh, he was in blackness and darkness, you know, no sound, no light, no nothing uh, for three days, and he tasted of that eternal death, and of course God raised him after that. Uh, but he tasted of that death. That was the, the penalty for sin. The angels will pay their own penalty, and Christ hope that, hopes that uh, we will allow him to pay for our own personal sins and uh, follow him in faithful relationship on this earth. All right, the third example is uh, mankind. If you didn't know this, when Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden and, his, and the Holy Spirit of God exited his human spirit, he became spiritually dead. He died much later physically, when his human spirit left his body, but he passes this death uh, to all his descendants, to all his posterity. That includes you and includes me. We were born in this condition. And I know we'd say, well, that's not fair and, and all of this, but this is, this is the way that it is, and uh, God has made a way for us to be saved. But, uh, and, and it would seem, since the angels uh, had no way to be saved, there, there's no hope for any sinning angel, it would appear that it would be the same thing for mankind, right? Full penalty for sin. But God found a small difference in the conditions under which the sin was committed for mankind, uh, for, you know, for, for mankind sinning and angelic sinning. There's a little bit of a difference, and that difference allowed for God to make one small way for mankind. I've got to hurry here. All right, uh, <clears throat> so the thing is the penalty must be paid for sin. We've all sinned and and fallen short, but that penalty must be paid. There's no getting around it. So who's going to pay it? We can't pay it. If we end up paying it, we'll be in, in uh, that blackness and darkness forever ourselves. God found his Christ. He, if he came to earth himself, uh, he could be the one that paid the penalty. One innocent man was born, Jesus Christ, lived life, tempted in every way for 33 years. He bore sorrows and grief, and he lived just like we do. And uh, he qualified himself to be our Savior. And at the age of 33, and, and uh, he was qualified because he lived the life that we lived, uh, resisting sin and fighting sin as, as a human being, not as God. He, he fought his battle as a, as a man. Then he qualified to be the Savior. He bore the sins of humanity on the cross, the whole wagon load God poured on him. Uh, and he paid the penalty. Remember the penalty, the full penalty is uh, eternal death. He paid by spiritual death. And then he paid eternal death for three days. And then God was, that justice was satisfied. said, okay, that, that paid for it. Uh, the, the penalty is paid. One man paid for it. And uh, that man, Jesus Christ, and it's paid in full. And then God was able to raise him by the word of his power. And that is the reason we are able to be raised. Now, I'm going to go into on another lesson the mechanics of that because God explains that to us in Romans. Uh, now, this provision for salvation is available to all, but it is applied to a small few, But because it, it requires our faith active on God's truth before that provision to take place. Uh, accepting Christ initially and then following Him actively, surrendering ourselves to Him on a daily basis, and that gets us to heaven.